Hello and welcome to another design tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about poster design. I'm going to take you through some steps on how to add blending modes to your posters. I'm going to take you through a couple options that you could choose from in terms of which blending modes work best for your specific layout, your design. Um, we're going to be hopping back and forth from Photoshop to InDesign because I'm going to show you how to add a filter to your main image um, just to add a little bit more depth to the overall outcome as you can see on my screen here. Um, so let's get started. As you can see on my screen, this is the finished product. I'm going to take you through the steps on how to add a blending mode through it and then um, put your typography on top much like I did here. So the first step you want to do, and I have mine here, is pick a nice image that uh, will be the display art on your on your poster okay so that's what I want it to to, um, to be here it's for a you know fictional fashion show conference this is the keynote speaker so there's a couple things I want to do in this situation you could do any other edits you want in terms of you know adding brightness contrast um, any other lighting edits for this purpose today I'm just taking you through a couple steps on how to desaturate the photo and then add a halftone color filter um, just to kind of give it a pixelated look. Okay, so let's do that first. Open your image and then go to Image Adjustments, um, Hue and Saturation. And basically all I want to do here is take the saturation slider and slide it all the way to the left. That will desaturate the entire photo. So in other words, it makes it black and white. You could just make it black and white. Another option is going to Image Adjustments and then Desaturate. Okay, so now that I have my photo um, desaturated, I'm just going to go up to Filter, Pixelate, Color Halftone. And what I want to do here is these settings here. Uh, the max radius, I usually leave it around 8, uh, but that will be depending on the photo that you're using. I find anywhere from 5 to uh, 10 to no more than 15 works best, so I'm going to leave mine at 8. And then these channels here, Basically, I'm just going to change all of them. I'm going to hit 50, tab, 50, tab, 50. You can play around with those settings as well. Um, anywhere between 40, 50, 60. Um, try it out. I, for this specific photo, I found that 50 works the best. So I have a max radius of 8 and all four channels are set to 50. And I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see now that my image, if I zoom in a little bit, now has a cool pixelated filter applied to it okay so I'm basically done here any other edits you could do in terms of um, like I said you can go to edit uh, image adjustments and then play around with any of the other you know exposure and things like that but I'm happy with how this is now and I'm just gonna go to file save as and I'm just gonna rename it something else um, I'll leave it in that folder and I'll call it uh, portrait pixel heated how's that okay good so save hit okay and now we're done here in Photoshop just gonna minimize that and go back to InDesign and by the way that filter option is just a it's just an option you don't have to do that I just found that um, in this case it looks a lot better than just leaving it flat and uh, you know uh, normal but in which case you can actually just try it out and see what works best for you. So I'm just gonna delete this. This is the finished product. I'm just working on an A4 uh, document, but posters, as you know, vary in size. So you can you know, make it 11 by 17, you can make it 18 by 24. But in this case, I'm just leaving it A, uh, A4, okay? Um, letter size is fine too. That's more of a flyer that works as well. So I'm not so much gonna focus on the typography aspect, but more so the the blending mode options that you can create here. So basically what I'm gonna do as a reference, I'm just gonna copy my image here and go ahead and paste it there. And I'm just gonna delete it, okay? I just need it for a reference point for my, um, I do have four layers here. So I'm gonna copy this layer and I want it on the color overlay. Okay, so basically I'm going to apply a color to this. 
Um, I'm gonna go to effects and change it to normal and 100%. Okay, so basically if you had just drawn out a uh, rectangle frame tool shape, just click on it, go to your swatches, make sure you're on the fill mode here, and then pick a color that you want to apply the blending mode with your image, okay? So in this case, I just picked a Pantone blue, and that's fine, okay? And now, I'm just gonna maybe do an alt and copy that over, and I'm gonna take the fill off to none. So now it's just a regular uh, picture frame. And I'm gonna do Command D. You can also go to File Place, because we're placing a photo, okay? So a lot of times, when if you're new to InDesign, you're gonna go to File and Open. Um, that's not how you open images. So make sure you're clicked on the, the frame, go to Image, Place, or Command Control D. Uh, make your way to your file. And there's the one that I've just edited. So there it is. I'm gonna drag it over. Actually, so this is on the same layer, so I need it to be on, I'm gonna cut it. I guess I could have just dragged it, but that's okay. Okay, so now as you can see, these are in two separate layers. I'm just gonna drag my image right over the, um, the box, the frame with the color fill, okay? And just as a reference point for you, you don't have to make these uh, this photo black and white or desaturated. I just found it worked best in the example that I'm showing you here. I want those black and white pixels to blend um, into a blending mode um, such as the one I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna click my image here, go to my effects panel, okay? Um, if you don't have effects, just go up to window and then there it is right there, effects. Make sure that, make sure you always have that panel open. It's one that's commonly used in InDesign. So I have my image selected, click normal up here. It doesn't really specify that these are blending modes, so it's just a drop down, but if you hover over it, it does say blending mode. So go ahead and click that. And I found that these first group here are the best um, blending modes that work in InDesign. So I usually always start with multiply, overlay, and screen, okay? You'll find that the result of these three, tech, usually, typically, uh, work the best. So let's start with multiply. Okay, so as you can see, that's not the 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 over um, sorry the blending mode that I used in this case, but that works, right? It's all dependent on what you like. So I'm going to click that again, go back to effects, and try screen. That works as well. You can see there's not much color to it now. It's almost uh, screen through, and it's a lot lighter. And that's what these these this group of blending modes do. So I find that I found that the the best blending mode that works in my case here is overlay. Okay, I still get enough color, and I can see my main image. And if I zoom in real tight, you can see I still have that pixelated look as well, which is really cool. So now that you have that, at this point, what I would do is go ahead and lock those two layers: image, color, overlay. And I had a background on this one, so you could lock that too um, as well. And then basically, you're on your way to start adding your typography. So I could just copy this stuff here. Command C, Command V. And just to give you a heads up of what I did here, let me ungroup that for a second. Usually when I'm cutting words in, in uh, any poster design, I do it in, in Illustrator because you have the option to mask text, where in InDesign you don't really have that luxury. So if you were gonna mask te text like I did here, um, you know, cut off a piece of a letter and then continue it on, on the other side, you almost have to cheat a little bit. So here's, I wanted the word fashion to be split up. So I've created a text box that says fashion. I ever so slightly had the S come out of the border there. And then I just created a, another text frame and matched it to the white color that I have there on my background. Okay, and that, you know, it's a way of cheating the mask a little bit, but it still gets the result done. But 
I usually would do this in, in um, Illustrator and then maybe copy the text over or do the whole thing in Illustrator, but because this is an InDesign tutorial, um, this is a way of doing that. And then playing around with your typography as well. Um, make sure that when you're working and you're putting in your type that you always are, have your uh, guides, create a guide grid uh, system to help you, um, you know, line up your text and anchor things. So what I would do is go to create guides, layout, create guides, and then set your rows and columns specific to your, your dimensions. So if it's a landscape um, document, your grid might be different than if you're working on a portrait like I am here, poster design. Okay, so that would be it. That's how you add blending modes and um, apply a filter in Photoshop and you get this result here. And that's it. That's today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.